Let's talk about how I can still pull heavy despite being lazy with leg training. The first thing to recognize is that I spent over a year specializing weighted pull-ups in all the variations. You see me do 165 from the standard and 165 semi-neutral. If this doesn't give you a bigger and stronger back, I don't know what will. You see, in the past, I thought that these exercises did not have carry because I was still weak at them. Weak relative to my frame and weight, of course. I was only doing 100 pounds. It wasn't until I got very strong, putting up these crazy numbers. Some would describe it as one times or two times body weight, depending how you phrase it. Did I see the improvements in my deadlifts? This completely replaced the cheat rolls, by the way. I haven't done that in a very long time. You see me do lightweight stuff with bands. So the main exercise I have to give credit to is the way to pull up. Guys, it is the truth. And you can watch my full segment that I made discussing this. And when I saw elite deadlifters like Kayla Willem talking about the exact same thing, it really put things into perspective. You can see the fact that size is strength and pull-ups allow you to get a lot of volume in without beating up the lower back. It makes sense why it would make you brutally strong because a deadlift, it's not the most technical exercise, you could say. Like you saw it with my 700 pound trap bar. I was shaking, I was wobbling all over the place. Guys, that was the first time I'd done that exercise in months. Last time was a 605 during the Brotastic workout. And then you saw me do a 700 uh, four inch Jefferson block pull. That's not the same exercise. High handle trap bar is harder. So I haven't even been maxing out. I haven't even been doing deadlifts. So the fact that I maintain this performance at a lighter body weight, 20 pounds lighter, tells me everything about the pull-ups. And that's why you need to give them a shot. Now that's just one part, obviously. There's still the posterior chain, the hip hinge exercises, you know, the lower body that you gotta maintain, right? First things first, cardio does not kill your gains. I've already proved this. I was doing over 35 kilometers a week in the fucking summer. Now, because of weather and all that, things have changed. I'm doing more GPP work over here. Nonetheless, I maintain the gains. So before I explain how this goes, let me put up this comment by a subscriber. I think he phrased it perfectly. Basically, I've been doing the bare minimum to maintain the gains. That's the honest truth. I've skipped legs on multiple occasions. I was either doing full body or just straight upper body workouts, like not even doing the legs. I would just do a run right after. But I maintained the performance because I did just enough to hit some high volume, then I would chill. So the workout itself, I would do a lunge variation of some type, and always a unilateral exercise, okay? Zercher style, it could be with the barbell on your back, it could be in the front position, it could even be Bulgarian split squat, or going to the gym, maxing out the dumbbell stack. Five sets of 20 or three by 20 if I was a little bit lazy was the most common way of doing things. Or just ramping sets of 10, very effective. And you see me do 225 for reps on this exercise. Not a problem whatsoever. And when you're just toying around with those weights, it'll make sense why your legs still maintain the strength. Now, it may not be the best thing for raising your squat, but guess what? Size is strength and it hypertrophies the quads, glutes, and hamstrings. And it maintains your pulling performance. So that's what I was trying to tell you guys all this time. Like lunges are brutally fucking effective. Low axial loading, so super easy to recover from, doesn't beat you the fuck down and you get more out of less weight. I don't do a lot of pistol squats these days, although there's one variation that I'll be sharing with you very soon, which is the pistol box squat. Now that'll make you brutally strong. And again, low axial loading. So unilateral exercises, that's my go-to, not heavy pulls or squats. So the next thing is including accessories because fuck minimalist programs. Those systems increase the risk of getting injured and it's not optimal. So the way that I do it, two exercises. The first is a good morning done with light weights, nothing heavy. The max I fucking done is 95 pounds for five by 10. Nothing heavy. It's just a little accessory that you do on the side because it's a hip hinge exercise, has amazing carry over to your deadlifts. And when you do a perfect form, high volume, does a great job building up the glutes and hamstrings and the lower back. So I'll either do the bang good mornings, which you see me do a lot on this channel. And actually there's a new variation, which I'll share with you very soon. Or I'll do the standard barbell or the safety squat bar. But again, nothing heavy. I haven't even touched 135. So that's what I'm saying. Just a little accessory on the side. And then I do band leg curls. Probably my favorite hamstring exercise ever. I fucking love it. It just, it's fantastic. I always hated leg curls done on the machines because it never agreed with my anthropometry, but when you do a lying down on your stomach with the bands, it's just absolutely incredible. So that's been the main goal too. I've also done it with ankle weights in the past. You see me do uh, glute ham raises, you see me do RDLs, all these things. But the main thing these days is the band leg curl. And honestly, that's all there is to it, guys. Getting strong as hell on the way to pull up, that's the main exercise. Then you do the unilateral movements, the lunges. So you get easy recovery, you get an amazing leg workout at the same time. Then you do a good morning variation of some type with light weights. Then you do a hamstring exercise. And of course you rotate all these variations to prevent overuse. That, my friends, is how I maintain my pulling strength. Now, if I want to take my gains to the next level, what would I do? Obviously, increase the weights for all these movements. And I would probably treat the unilateral stuff 
as a secondary exercise. So the first movement would be a deadlift variation of some type. It could be uh, done off blocks or a rack or just off the floor. Or it could be a squat of some type. Or I could do squat, then deadlift right after, then unilateral, then further accessories, which would be like next level programming. That's if I really want to get really strong. But as I point out at the beginning of this video, where I, I actually, as a subscriber point out, I've been doing the bare minimum to maintain these gains. And that's all there is to it, guys. So moving forward, I think I will take my legs to the next level. I think it's been a long time. I think the spark is finally starting to come back. And honestly, after doing that 700 pounds, it felt fucking great. It was a really long time since I've done exercise like that. So I'm feeling it, guys. And you know what? Maybe I should max out on different variations as well. Maybe we can compare and contrast the variations, see how everything carries over. If you even care about that in the first place. But that's all there is to it, man. I'm just excited. I think this is one of the best times uh, for YouTube Fitness, for just everybody getting strong, everybody getting more jacked. And I feel like we're all growing together. And honestly, the spark is there. So that's all there is to it, guys. That's how I maintain my gains. Let me know what you think could be improved upon. Let me know what you want to see.